Ev is the former president of the country of Russia. And right now he stands as one of the leading figures that will decide if Russia begins a nuclear Armageddon on the rest of the world. He has said that following the results of this war inside of Ukraine, there will soon be more regions that will become the Russian Federation. He warned that the special military operation, that is what they're calling the war in Ukraine, will continue until a complete destruction of a Nazi regime and the liberation of native Russian territories are taking place from the enemy. He said that victory will be Russia's and there will be new regions inside of this new Russian Federation. That's Medvedev writing this information directly to his official Telegram social media channel. We have had people over and over again say that Russia will not move past Ukraine and here we have the former president who isn't like former United States presidents who have a weakening amount of power and control inside of the country after they move past their presidency. Medvedev is still a leading member of the Russian government and he will be one of the deciding factors whether Russia uses nuclear, chemical or biological weapons in the future of this conflict. He is, he is saying, saying right, right there, there that, that Russia, Russia and a new, a new Russian, Russian federation, federation is rising. Is rising. Elon, Elon Musk inside, inside of the United, United States, States of America, America as we move on, has asked, asked why do so many American politicians from both the Democratic and the Republican side care hundreds of times more about the Ukrainian border than they do the United States border? That's a That's question, question that we need to begin, begin asking, asking ourselves, and we, and we start, start to see that politicians in the United States of America and inside of other countries, they are both working only toward one goal. That is more power and more control. We are getting warnings right now that the next large mobilization wave inside of Russia will begin starting in the next 48 hours and will continue for at least the next week. They say that the regime, which of course is what the United States of America calls the Russian government, is downplaying both the scope and the effectiveness of the new mobilization. They say that only 130,000 people will be conscripted into this war. And we see them repeating the same propaganda that they say they won't be cannon fodder. What we do know is that pawns are fighting government wars as they have since the beginning of time. And we know that this is about to continue. NATO, NATO which, which is, is the, the alliance, alliance brought together by the Western, Western world. They are, they are bolstering, bolstering their forces, forces in Kosovo. Kosovo. The, US the U.S. has urged Serbia to withdraw from the border with Kosovo, Kosovo and the White House has said that the Serbian military, military deployment is very destabilizing to global order. order. NATO ordered, ordered the deployment of additional, additional combat, combat elements, elements to the northern Kosovo region. region. They say these, these will assist with KFOR peacekeeping forces following a reported, reported terrorist, terrorist attack and heavy, heavy fighting near an Orthodox, Orthodox monastery. monastery. Now, this, now, this happened, happened right, right on the border, border with, with Serbia. Serbia. It resulted in deaths and injuries to multiple people. people. Kosovo, Kosovo identified, identified 30, 30 different gunmen, gunmen who took part in this attack as members of the Serbian military and intelligence from the Western world said they were armed with APCs and other weaponry. NATO warned on Friday that it is right now increasing its peacekeeping presence, uh, presence in northern Kosovo, and they're doing this as a result of what they call escalating tensions in the neighboring nearby region of Serbia. The USA right now is becoming embattled in multiple conflicts across our world. We see them taking part in the Middle East and what's brewing there between Israel and Iran. We see them taking part in what's happening between Russia and what Russia calls the new Russian Federation. And we see the United States of America right now preparing to defend Taiwan and our allies in the Asian Pacific. What we do know is that you cannot fight this many conflicts at one time, and it's going to be the children of the men and women of the United States of America that are fighting this war for our government. British, British troops, troops right now are being deployed over to Kosovo, Kosovo and the, the Ministry of Defense has said that they will bolster their own preparedness for a large conflict there. there. We're seeing We're some, some images showing a drone factory that has been set on fire in Tehran and, and that's becoming what we see as part of this sabotage in this conflict. conflict. They say, they say that, that the, the probability, probability of a governmentally understood corporate and public recession in the last part of 2023 and into 2024 will be at levels that have only been seen in two times in history. What we know is that the government is preparing for you to have less money, and so you should prepare for this also. 
The U.S. US housing housing market market affordability is by far at its its lowest lowest point in history, history. and even during the worst part of the 2008 financial crisis, crisis, affordability lasted around 15 percent better than than where it's at at its current levels. levels. With the recent move higher in Treasury yields, we expect an 8% mortgages to take place and start affecting this within the next uh, week or so. This also means that the median home payment will soon cross $3,000. It's going to do this for the first time in history. Home buyers are now spending 50% of their median pre-tax household income just on their housing payment. What they have done is make Owning Owning a home home or surviving surviving in your your shelter shelter, a luxury. luxury. You You literally literally cannot make make up what's happening and how bad it is. These payments stand at $2,900 right now. Median Median rent stands at around $2,000. It costs $1,000 more to buy a house than to rent a house. The average new car payment stands at between $750 and $1,000 per month, where the interest rate on these payments is at 14%. These are record highs. Credit card debt hit over $1 trillion for the first time in history, and you're seeing us breaking these records every single month. Interest rates are up at 25%, and basic necessities to live are becoming unaffordable for Americans. Now moving over to what's happening in China. China China states states that it's the the USA USA that's that's bringing bringing the entire entire world dangerously dangerously close to nuclear nuclear Armageddon. Armageddon. They say this has been uh, confirmed confirmed now after the U.S. military military revived a Cold War submarine spy program program that counters what America America sees as a growing growing Chinese Chinese threat. threat. The United United States States is undertaking undertaking what they call a significant significant overhaul overhaul of the underwater underwater surveillance surveillance program program known as the IUSS or the Integrated Integrated Undersea Undersea Surveillance Surveillance System. System. This This revamp revamp is the the largest largest of its its sort sort since since the Cold War. War. It aims to modernize the country's anti-submarine spy capabilities, and the overhaul comes in response to heightened concerns about China's military activities near Taiwan, Japan, South Korea, and other Asian Pacific allies. As was previously unreported, several key elements about this revival are happening. They're upgrading underwater acoustic spy capabilities and cables, The U.S. is modernizing its network of these underwater spy cables, which have been used for decades to monitor different uh, submarine activity. They are also getting ready to deploy anti-submarine weaponry inside of the region. The Navy's renewed focus on this underwater surveillance is driven by several factors, including China's maritime power. You have to remember that we have people inside of our own military right now saying that it is China that will win a conflict over the sea. China's maritime power and rapid expansion of its naval capabilities, particularly in its submarine fleet, has raised new concerns inside of the U.S. military about intentions in the Indo-Pacific region. Now, this, of course, all barrels down to what's going to happen with Taiwan. China, you remember, is running near daily sorties. They're running these missions every single day around Taiwan. They're spending massive amounts of their GDP just to run ships, just to run jets, just to run anti-mine and mining capabilities around this country. And what they're doing is they're doing this every single day so that one day they'll turn these exercises into a reality. Now, we are seeing drone tactics evolve across our world as the conflict for uh, World War III really starts to heat up. Ukraine's successful use of unmanned sea vehicles in its conflict with Russia, this is highlighting the vulnerability of large surface vehicles to drone attacks. The U.S. Navy aims to master this technology both in its defensive and offensive capabilities. We're starting to see artificial intelligence being used in everyday war. Now, this this is a change change because as soon as the United United States States of America, and you have to remember, 60 some percent of the US population population believes that we will enter a civil war in the next 10 years. years. And some some would say say that's that's projection projection because because if they're they're that ready to go and that ready to shed blood in the streets of our country, then a lot of these people are preparing to do just that. So if 60 some percent of our population is prepared to go to war against their neighbors, against their family, against their government, inside of the United States of America, you have to realize that the government is also preparing for the same. 
This, this is, is a war. It's multifaceted. What's, What's happening is they are attacking your ability, ability to thrive as a human being. being. You should, you should not, not have, have to spend 60 to 80% of your, of your income just on your shelter. shelter. You shouldn't you have, have to spend a large percentage of your income just on the food that you are bringing into your home. Your home. Nobody, Nobody should have, have to make, make the decision if they're working 40 to 80 hours per week, week whether, whether they're, they're going, going to feed their children or keep the lights on. But these, but these are, the are the decisions that are being made every single day in the United States of America by people just like you. It's not just our country, though. These hardships are being felt around our world. And the question we have to ask ourselves is how long can it last? Why is it being allowed to happen? And what can we do to get ready? I want to remind you that because inflation is expected to continue this month and every month hereafter, if nothing else, it's not going to go in reverse. Every can of food that you purchase today, everything that you do to get the staple foods you need to at least survive, maybe not thrive, inside of your pantry is a hedge against future inflation. Now, if you're looking at stocks and you're looking at betting, those hedges mean that I am going to put money away in an investment form and I'm expected to get a return on that investment. You're hedging what you expect to see in the future. So So you you need need to, right right now, now, think think about about how you can hedge hedge against against what's what's coming. coming. I hope that you guys guys will talk in the comments. comments. Maybe Maybe share some ideas between between each other. other. See what you can can come up with. with. You can share share recipes. recipes. You can can tell other people people about what's happening in your area. But most of all, I hope that you and your family are remaining aware to the events that are happening in your own environments and your own regions. And I hope that you are staying safe. This week's week's Full Spectrum Spectrum News is brought to us in part by each one of you. Make sure you subscribe to our channel here. Leave a comment and a like on today's video. Share this video with other people. It'll probably get taken down from Instagram or from Twitter or from Facebook. But keep sharing it. Maybe some people are waking up to just how bad things are for others around this planet. If you're looking for prescription antibiotics, you don't take them today. You take them in the future if you need them. Check out out contingencymedical.com and use the code code FSS10. You're going to get a large discount there. And nutrientsurvival.com forward slash FSS has real meals that are ready to eat and other food products that you and your family can use to get ready. The code 